So during archival research, we came across the following document contained within a wooden box upon which was carved a curious symbol. After carefully slitting the seal, we recovered a strange object, a box of glass lantern slides and a short stained document. We believe this to be the basis for many of the depictions of stone circles within films and television programmes in the later decades of the 20th century. How the information therein was transmitted to those responsible for those moving pictures remains unknown, but is a subject of ongoing research. The short document is entitled, the short undated document is entitled, being an account of the standing stones and stone circles of Hookland, a preamble. As is the case with Mr Ebenezer Scrooge, the author wishes to remain anonymous. <laughs> we believe this to be the foreword or introduction to of the complete volume now considered lost. And I'll read the document. There are numerous megalithic monuments in the county of Hookland namely standing stones and stone circles. These monuments have been the object of my studies for these past years. This report appertains to my studies in, re in relation to these magnificent monuments, which I personally visited and documented at cost. I believe, sir, that prior to my own research, almost no written word has been committed to paper to document this phenomenon. This is probably pre-Edgar Snell. Um, it's kind of a Terminus antiquem or postquem, whichever one that is, I can never remember. Um, <laughs> I have heard of the scratch etchings of standing stones on the Misericordia of St. Serf's Church hereabouts, information vouchsafed me by a local man of the cloth. Other accounts exist only in the whisper of conjecture. By my count in Hookland, there are 14 circles of standing stones and a further three sites that are single rows formed by between three and five stone uprights. Further to this number, there are in the order of a score plus two single standing stones scattered across the county. Geographically, these monuments take the high ground. A few, though, are located in the fields and studiously ploughed around. Others sit within the view of domestic residences, which looks suspiciously like Dunfermline. <laughs> the better known amongst these include the weather-worn buddy stone and the corrupted form of the slaughter stone. Both have been footnoted in epistles such as the work of Canon Greenwell and were, I believe, known to the Reverend Stukley. To the southwest of the county can be found the sinister 13 penitent sinners, a setting of ugly granite boulders that have the countenance of kneeling and apostate individuals. Within the midst of this ellipse sits a carved stone altar, upon which, so it is whispered locally, certain hooded individuals gather from time to time to sacrifice frogs and toads in a most gruesome fashion. <laughs> Such folk practices within these rude stone monuments are, of course, an affront to modern science, with the abasement of amphibians not the worst of it, sir. <laughs> I have overheard the disreputable and dirty public houses, crude commentary on ancient sacrificial practices that date back to the aborted Roman invasion of the county. Of the ancient stones themselves, we can suppose that they were constructed using brute labour, perhaps teams of rope-hauling slaves assisted by diverse domesticated beasts. This process would have been accompanied by much straining, and it would not be fanciful to imagine appalling injuries dealt out to some unfortunates who fell into the path of these ghastly processions. At the head of this procession, with the stone dragged behind like a bloated corpse, would have been the shaman chief, a druid of some standing, who, so legend has it, supped goat's milk from a hollow on top of the toadstone. <laughs> Their true age cannot be ascertained in the absence of certain isotopic techniques which are yet to be invented, although which I've seen. <laughs> it does sound strange until you hear the rest of the sentence. <laughs> although I have, of which I have seen evidence for within my scry stone. <laughs> it is likely, however, that Hookland's ancient stones, being beyond the reckoning of the counting of the years, nay centuries must be older than even the place that is known as Stonehenge. <coughs> Tell of standing stones brings me to... Ooh, brings me to the matter of diffusionary tendencies of the Hookland stones. Many hundreds of similar, although more refined, megaliths are known to exist across the kingdom, although none, as I, are, are fancy, um, none I fancy as old as those of Hookland. I think it likely that a process of diffusion occurred in prehistory. By this I mean that the idea of stone circles and the essence of standing stones oozed through the boundaries of Hookland, which were then more porous than they are now and infected first the neighbouring counties and then all other parts. For megalithic monuments, forsooth, are not merely the plaything of occultists and antiquaries such as myself, but also deeper powers not of this earth. 
My scrying stone has been put to use to prophesy that in future times, moving depict pictures will depict for mass audiences the primordial power of standing stones for the purpose of opening portals to the dwelling places and cages of these deeper powers. Cursed images embellished with powerful secret incantations. This forward must draw to an end as something is clawing at the door of my library and... <laughs> Here the note ended and was hastily, so it seems, placed into the box and sealed. Is this a fictional flight of fancy, the words of a deranged person, or a warning from the past? Over to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so following that, I guess, um, <coughs> I did some research for my dissertation um, for undergraduate. I'm now a master's student at University of Glasgow. Um, and for my undergrad, I looked at folk horror films from 1957 to 1979. So from, to put that in context, from Night of the Demon to Quater Mask 4. Um, but for this research, we've gone all the way to Troll 2 in 1990. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great film. <laughs> Sorry. It is. It's, it's literally wildly... <laughs> the best film ever. Nobody talks about it enough. <laughs> I will. <laughs> so um, for my research, I had to create a methodology because this data isn't really used much in archaeology. Um, so for this, I looked at a couple of the films and then I created a pro forma sheet. So I looked at some of the films so I could look at what some of the recurring tropes were. Um, and then I was split it into sections. So what are the spiritualities, cults and religions that were, for, that were um, using the stone circles? What the rituals were and what the standing stones did themselves. And within these sections, I delved really quite deeply into it. So um, what, the, what time of year the religions took place, what time of day, how many people were involved the dress, and what the standing stones looked like if they were real or fake, which I will talk about my conclusions for. Um, later. Um, when I created my pro forma sheet at the beginning, um, I then did rounds of watching the films and then I kept adding stuff to the pro forma sheet which meant I had to keep re-watching the films. <laughs> at this point I have no idea how many times I've seen Psychomania, but um, it's now like my favourite film, so never too many. Um, so. <laughs> Who were the sinister people um, involved with the stone circles? Most of the films drew on themes, all but one, drew on themes of ancestral connection and the ancients. There was one film that had pagan, um, which was described as being a pagan religion. That was The Wicker Man. Um, two satanic and black magic, um, so Night of the Demon and Psychomania. Three druids, one alien um, and three that were just described as ancients. But all of them um, drew from the what we'd call druids and um, the, the patriarchal priests which are seen. So we have Christopher Lee with the golden sickle and the, the branch. Then we have the Viking queen, priest druid, and then from um, Children of the Stones, that is just uh, named as an ancient religion, but it looks like it really comes from the Druids, which um, so that we have the idea of the Druid priests in a patriarchal of position of the community, so like mayors and late lords, um, um, taking place rituals at a stone temple, which is what we see coming from antiquarian interpretations of these places as well. Um, I must say that the patriarchal characters for someone um, like me watching it, at points it was difficult to watch because it was very heavily patriarchal. So if you've ever seen the stones, he is horrible to his wife. But it's just one of the things that come from this type of data set. <laughs> <laughs> so what were the rituals that happened at, stone, at the stone circles? So um, here we have the the dancing 13-year-old virgins that the more you look at it, you see that they're definitely not 13 and they're definitely not naked. Um, and the Wicker Man, um, but we also have a lot of instances of sacrifice. And in the Wicker Man, they have the, the sword where people get beheaded. Um, so that element of sacrifice there, but also in the, ha the Hammer Horror film Viking Queen, there is multiple um, sacrifices of all types of scales and the fire. 
Um, but that is very hammer horror, I guess. Um, there's always a supernatural presence within the rituals and elements of magic which are always seen as actually existing in the films, except for in The Wicker Man, which you don't know if the, the sacrifice of Sergeant Howie is going to pay off in the end or not. That's completely unknown. Spoiler <laughs> I should have thought, yeah, sorry, massive amounts of spoilers. So, the stones themselves. Um, the stones represent the ties to the ancestral community. I think that's why there's always uh, an ancestral link, because these are things left, seen as things left behind by ancient peoples. Um, but there is, and it also shows, or there's always an element of isolation as well. Um, and stones seem to represent being out in a landscape that is, you know, desolate, which in archaeology we understand not to be true. <laughs> because they always almost exist in a landscape that are complex and palimpsests of other activities. Um, so one of the other interesting conclusions that I drew from this research was that the, the films either chose real sites or created their <coughs> own stone circle sites for the production. So this is from Psychomania. Um, and that this film it, it, this is a completely false stone circle site. Um, they exploit the man-made or artificial stones to exemplify the the folk the folklore to do with it. So this is the seven witches, which are um, witches that have been turned to stone. And then again, another spoiler in it, where that is the scene of another set of people being turned to stone. But you can see like they're people shaped and you can see that there's like arms out. So they're really trying to push that narrative. <coughs> and where there were stone sites um, that were real, they were almost always Stonehenge. <laughs> and when David said earlier that Stonehenge is boring, I felt that deep within my soul. <laughs> um, they, so where they were a real site, where it was Stonehenge and it was the real Stonehenge, um, there were also instances where it was a fake Stonehenge. So the bottom is Quatermass, and that is a fake Stonehenge um, because they destroyed it. Spoiler. <laughs> and then above is Troll 2, which is where Stonehenge is taken, or a, a trilathon from Stonehenge is taken to America, and she is accessing Druid powers. Um, but in the Wicker Man, you see trilathons, so it's echoing the architecture from Stonehenge. And it draws, I think it's, that's done because to draw from the mysticism associated um, to Stonehenge itself. So um, just a little bit of data, four of the films had Stonehenge or remakes of Stonehenge. Two were Stonehenge lookalikes, two were Averbury, and one was just really fake. So that was the seven witches from Psycho <coughs> Um So that's me. <laughs> that's a very abrupt ending, I'm sorry. <laughs>